The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our Gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the fourth Sunday in Lent. We're looking at John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, where Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does not does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. My dear friends in Christ, as we look at this reading, especially the closing words of this reading, what Jesus does is he draws a clear distinction between believers and unbelievers. And what Jesus wanted is for Nicodemus and for all of us to see our own spiritual condition and our need to follow only Jesus the Savior. Jesus said, I, the light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. The difference between believers and unbelievers, according to this, is their, their attitude toward the Savior, toward Jesus. He came as the light of men to shine into this world's spiritual darkness. Un unbelievers reject that light and prefer the darkness, which seems so strange, but with their intelligence, which actually is only foolishness, they deliberately choose to remain under the control of Satan, the prince of darkness, which doesn't make sense. When the saving light comes to them and tries to free them from their enslavement to Satan and sin, they fight back, and they insist on remaining in their evil deeds. That doesn't make sense. But Jesus says, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Believers, though, on the other hand, will want to be completely the opposite. Jesus said, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Believers willingly live their lives with the reality of their own unworthiness on, on their own, and they rely only on God's love. We know our sinful nature craves sin's darkness. We know that, but because of the Holy Spirit, we look to God for his help to seek the light, to seek Jesus so that we can live by the truth. We want to reflect the light of the gospel that God has shined into our hearts. And, and now it's because of Jesus that we have a new life that wants to live as the children of God. When the Bastille, a castle-like prison in Paris, was about to be destroyed in 1789, there was a convict who was brought out of its confinement and brought out of one of these gloomy cells where there was nothing but pitch darkness for years, no light at all. He had been in that situation. When he was brought out, instead of joyfully accepting his liberty, he begged to be taken back. It had been so long since he had seen the sunshine 
that his eyes just couldn't endure its brightness. His only desire was to go back and die in the murky dungeon in which he had been for so many years as a captive. That sounds unbelievable, but, but it's true. The darkness of sin and unbelief tragically is kind of like that, is like the darkness of that convict's cell, but even much worse. It grabs hold of an unbeliever so that he has absolutely no desire for the blessings God wants to give us because of Christ. He may want the blessings of, of money and possessions and things, but he doesn't want the spiritual blessings of God. That's what unbelief does. It misses out on what the real blessings are. And now that darkness, understand, it has the unbeliever. And it wants to get us back in its clutches too. How thankful we have to be that God graciously sent his son to be our savior from sin. And that he also sent his Holy Spirit to pull us from that darkness of sin and unbelief into the light of the gospel. But then also to keep on working through the word to keep us safe in the faith and away from sin's deep darkness. Again, because of Christ, we have a new life that's, that's now in this life and it's also forever in heaven. As we began looking at this scripture reading, I referred to that young man that I had met years ago who had this promising future in the airborne division. But then what happened to him is this lady hit him while he was riding his motorcycle, severely breaking his leg and almost taking his life but but because of that the airborne vision was airborne division was an impossibility his future kind of shattered and that young man he expressed that extreme concern asked me to pray for that young lady who had hit him and that i said surprised me it didn't really make sense. You would have expected him to be calling a lawyer to try to see what he could get because his future had been kind of destroyed. But his concern for that lady can also remind us about the unexpected and illogical love that God has for us. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God, through Christ, he's given us eternal life. Let's thank him for his illogical love and let's live also to promote that love in this world, in this sin-darkened world, because our world really needs more of that love, that love from God in Jesus Christ. It needs more of that illogical love and how blessed we are because God so loved the world, including you and me, and that he gave his one and only son, God's amazing love. He gave us his son so that, well, because of Christ, we have a new life now and forever. As believing children of God, we really, despite life's problems and trials and troubles, we have a wonderful life right now because we have God's forgiveness and love. And we have a most promising future. We have the most promising future ahead for us. Again, because of Christ. Because God so loved the world. So that whoever believes in him will not perish have eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we always have to be amazed by your illogical love for sinners like us. We sin, but the Son suffered for us, and now through faith in him, we are not only not condemned, but we are also heirs of eternal life in heaven. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.